Okay. Oh, yeah, yeah. I should. Okay. You're good? I have it going. Awesome. <laughs> Not that I need to be in it. Uh, I want to welcome everybody. This is a nice group of people that have turned out for this uh, this particular topic. Uh, Erica Nelson comes from Humanities Kansas, and she's right here. And I know she knows at least Dawn. I don't know if anybody else. Maybe Rob, do you know Erica by chance? We have Not some yet. some good historians here today, so you'll have some have a fun time talking to some of them. Uh, her presentation, "What a Ride: Rural Community Owned Carnivals." Uh, is brought to us by Humanities Kansas, and I think we've had several Humanities Kansas programs um, presented here, and we know that uh, it's a nonprofit organization designed to open up conversations in rural communities. Small ones, I think, is what we're working mm -hmm. on. Uh, um, I do ask that you turn off your cell phones, and I'll need to run around and do that, uh, so that we can just enjoy the presentation does that sound good? Uh, Erica is an independent artist and educator who lives in Lucas, Kansas. And how many of you know where Lucas is at? How many of you have been to Lucas? I have. been past Good. That doesn't count. Uh, she no, that doesn't count. <laughs> in, uh, enjoys investigating the nooks and crannies of the United States and seeking out the odd and unusual. Gathering stories of people, building immersive art environments, and documenting roadside vernacular architecture, known as world's largest things. And I, we just had a, like a 15-minute tur turbo tour of our museum, and it, it's always fun for me to see what people take pictures of. And Linda, thank goodness you you rescued that stage, that stage backdrop that we were going to throw away. <laughs> Those are very cool. Cool. And the little carnal, the Ferris wheel yeah. that we rest, that was rescued for us. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's always fun to see what other people find exciting in our museum. She's developed her own traveling roadside attraction featuring the world's largest collection of the world's smallest versions of the world's largest things. Settling in Lucas in a house adjacent to the S.P. Dismore Visionary Folk Art Site, the Garden of Eden. How many of you have been to the Garden of Eden? Okay. If you haven't, it's a, it's a fun place to go. It really is. Uh, she currently serves as the Cultural Resource Director. Erica also works with the preservation crews at sites across the country, consults for the state of Kansas as a folk and traditional arts specialist, and writes for art, travel, and industry publications. Her work has been published in numerous publications while her art practice has been reviewed, been reviewed in Freeze Art Form and the Wall Street Journal. So we have a really special speaker here with us today. Erica, I'll turn it over to you. Thanks. Well, one of my favorite things about doing humanities council presentations is that they are often in small towns. And by now, I've been to a lot of them, but there's always one or two that I haven't been to yet, and I haven't been here. So this is always a chance for me to see. It. I usually come on about an hour early and just drive around town. I'll stay an hour or two later and look at more things because this is where the next topic is going to come from. Maybe not you specifically, but I love this quote. And um, anybody who's ever research something might identify with this. I find that a great part of the information I have was acquired by looking up something and finding something else along the way. And that's exactly what happened with the topic that I have today. Um, and the topic I have today is about community-owned carnivals that are happening now. You kind of hear carnival and you hear county fair and you think, oh, that's something we used to do or that's something we still kind of do, but it's not like I remember it. This is a very current story that has some deep roots, but it all started from a Facebook post. A friend of mine posted these interesting plastic cabochons and she just said, hey, are you a crafty person and want to do something with these vintage carnival light covers? Let Wichita County Amusement Association member know. You can make a donation or take them for free. There are thousands. 
And I was like, what even are those? And they're like, oh, you know, they're on a circus ride. It's a plastic cover that goes over the white light that makes it into that sort of jolly rancher-like beautiful thing that draws you like a butterfly to the light. And I was like, oh, those are cool. How many do you have? And she was like, uh, a lot. Like, well, okay, my a lot and your a lot might be different a lot. So how many is a lot? And she was like, a lot. So I go to pick up these beautiful cabochons. There's a better picture of them. And she was right, they had a lot. So I ended up with one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, about 25 cases of these. And this was just the tip of the iceberg. This is only what I could fit in my Jeep Cherokee at the time. Because when I showed up at this warehouse in the middle of rural Kansas, um, they had a lot. I mean, like, it was a lot, a lot. So I went back with a farm truck. We stopped at Orshans on the way and got dog panel gates that were uh, eight feet long and six feet high. Filled up his truck, filled up my Jeep again, and we got a lot of cabochons. And then, after I was so greedily loading up the truck with these beautiful things, I looked around and I realized they had these for a reason. And I started seeing like the remnants of a traveling carnival. It's like, oh, did you guys just have your carnival leave? And they're like, oh no, we have our own carnival rides. It's like, what? Nobody has their own carnival rides. They're like, oh yeah, we do. That's why we had the cabochons. They bought a truckload off of eBay because they had two or three lights out and that was the cheapest way to get them. And so I looked around, and it's not like bouncy houses or um, homemade rides. These are genuine, full-size carnival rides like you would see at the state fair. It's like, how is it that you guys own your own carnival rides? And they started filling me in on why carnivals are still alive and well in Western Kansas today. So three weeks later, we went back. They had all the rides assembled. They were going for only three days, so they own these massive pieces of equipment to use for three days, and anybody in ag knows what I'm talking about. Like, your combine sits there most of the time. And so this is why farmers have no trouble leaping into the world of being a carny, because it's like, yeah, we'll buy that giant piece of equipment for use for three days. Uh, tickets were 25 cents to ride the ride. This was in 2017. So this is not long ago far away land. Okay, it's, it's a little far away, but it's not a long time ago. This is happening now. What town is it? Uh, so this one is, um, oh, Wichita County? Leota. 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 Yeah, this is yeah. Leota's. Yeah. Um, and so I started, anytime I had a lecture, I would go to their fairgrounds and see if they too had remnants, because it turns out there are over a dozen Western Kansas communities. These are all in Tribune. Uh, this is one of the farthest west counties in Greeley County. Um, and they all had the same origin story and the same reason why. But each of these communities highlighted, there's about a dozen up there, own their own equipment, run a carnival for three days out of the year, and do it all volunteer. This is volunteer run, it's volunteer acquired, it's volunteer um, put away, it's volunteer maintained. And it, there's two different origin stories I found whenever I started really asking about these. So for a lot of them, it was that um, carnival companies used to travel and they would usually be happy in the small towns with whatever they got for the admission. But at a certain point, they started having a cap. They're like, all right, you have to guarantee us $20,000 for our midway to come to your small town. Tribune is 900 people, maybe. Um, they couldn't make that $20,000 cap. And if they couldn't guarantee, uh, the part of the guarantee was, if you don't make that with admissions and sales, the city is then liable for the rest of that amount. So it's basically asking a town, all right, you have to pay us $20,000 and hope that we don't ask for the whole amount. And that was just out of reach for so many Western Kansas communities. So they're like, all right, we, the carnival stopped coming. Um, they couldn't afford the insurance either to cover uh, increasing expenses for larger carnival companies. 
So eventually, in the, a lot of them in the 1980s, some in the 1990s, started deciding, well, we can't let this part die. What do we do? Some of them started making their own rides, but some of them also started purchasing them. And so I started looking at Western Kansas, and I put a little call out for who else has a community-owned carnival. And I ended up with a list, and I started checking Google Maps. And it is usually in a little section of the fairground, and you get these telltale pinwheels of the remnants of them if they're not, if the Google Earth image wasn't taken when it was going. Or in this case, you can see some of them are set up. So this is at the Sherman County Fairgrounds. This one is at the Sheridan County Fairgrounds in Hoxie. Hoxie is a town of 600 people. Uh, this one is Thomas County Fairgrounds, and there's a big white building in the middle that'll become important later on. But you can see here, there are all of those little rounds that are these large-scale uh, uh, carnival rides. Um, so in that list, I went back through and they started incorporating as nonprofits. They're usually separate from the fairgrounds themselves. So the county fairs are in one structure, but the amusement associations are usually incorporated only for the rides. And that is about insurance, which I'll also talk about a little bit later. But here you can see a lot of those dates kind of fall into two categories, the late 80s and early 90s, but then there's a couple of super early ones. And those super early ones have a slightly different origin story. And their origin story is that in northwestern Kansas, there was a news report of a carny abducting two women, raping and killing them, and leaving them by the side of the road. And that's when some of the Northwestern early ones, Oberlin and uh, Wallace County Sharon Springs, decided that they wanted their carnivals run by locals. So Sharon Springs uh, had an anniversary post not too long ago um, commemorating all of the local farmers who volunteered their farm trucks to go over to Colorado. There is a defunct amusement park. and. The farmers just all loaded up these amusement park rides on farm trucks, trucked them back to Sharon Springs, and erected them then and there. And so they've been having their own carnival since 1979. So this is this huge hidden history. It's like, how did I not know this? I didn't find it out till 2017. It's like, how can something this amazing be such a secret? Uh, because I knew about early Kansas carnival history, and I'll go through that really, really quick because you guys had straight carnival in this region? Ottaway. Ottaway. Ottawa. So Ottawa, <laughs> um, straight carnivals, Broadbeck, uh, in Kinsley, all of these have a pretty ingrained history in where they're from. So a lot of these small towns already know that part of it. Uh, so I'll just go through briefly. Our most famous one, of course, is C.W. Parker. And he started off uh, and I, I'm all about origin stories, like why do people do what they do? C.W. Parker, anybody recognize that name? Carousels, there you go. Um, at the age of 17 in 1883, he saw a traveling carnival that just had a merry-go-round. And he observed this strange thing. These people would ride to the carnival grounds on their horse, get off their horse, walk over to a set of wooden horses, get on those wooden horses and ride around in a circle, get off of the wooden horse and leave a dime. And he thought, these are horse riders riding wooden horses and paying a dime to do it? I need to get in on that because uh, that sounds pretty sweet. So he started uh, buying his own carousel and then eventually repaired the parts enough so that at a certain point he figured, you know what, this is no longer a carousel that I bought. I've fixed everything on here. I've recarved all these horses. So he started putting his own name onto that carnival carousel and started manufacturing his own. Uh, with a first factory in Abilene, so all of those C.W. Parker carousel horses grew out of that origin point. Abilene had the factory for an awful long time, so, and he started off with other carnival games too, but really started developing the traveling carnival that we used to know. Um, so early ads have 
the Parker carousels in Abilene. At a certain point, Abilene got tired of the truck traffic and started implementing one-way streets, thinking that, okay, this would be a great way to control traffic and, you know, he's too big to move. What's he going to do? He was not too big to move. He was too big to uh, be ignored. So he was like, I don't like this. You're not going to change it. So he moved to Leavenworth. So all of a sudden, instead of C.W. Parker out of Abilene, it becomes C.W. Parker of Leavenworth. Uh, so there is still... Have you been to Leavenworth to their carousel uh, museum? Yeah, so there is yeah, a carousel yeah, in Leavenworth. Yeah, the great big one. It goes faster than any carousel I've ever seen. And kids were hanging on for dear life. <laughs> and it's a big full-sized one. And then they had the, the real primitive ones with the horses just there and somebody had to push. Yeah. They had, that, that's, that was cute, real cute. And you can still ride one in Abilene too, but it doesn't go nearly as fast. fast. Yeah. yeah. It, I think that's why they had to put walls up in Leavenworth because they were just spinning off. I mean, no, just about, true. just about though, but they were hanging on for dear life. I've never seen one go so fast, it's re really fast. And those little kids, I thought like, this is kind of dumb, but they could slow, I don't know. But they'd remember it. Oh, I'm sure they <laughs> yeah. did. I'm sure yeah. they so, did. So they ended up with a great history there and a great loud, loud, loud carousel. I don't know if you, was it, was the music going in the building? Uh, it, I, I don't recall that. I just remembered the incredible speed <laughs> it was going at. Well, that was... Um, so that carnival history did end up being a part of it. So you can ride a carousel there. You can ride one still in Abilene, even though it's not much of their history anymore. Um, but they started doing county fair circuits. And most of the traveling circuses that you find had to have at least two pieces of equipment. One would be that carousel. The other would be a Ferris wheel, because from a distance, that's what says carnival. You see that and you know that a carnival is in town. So any traveling carnival worth its salt had to have each one of those. So in Kinsley, Kansas, the Charles Broadbeck family had the same origin story that Parker had. Uh, old man Broadbeck went to a carnival, rode his horse there, got off of his horse, saw that everybody else was getting off their real horses, going over to the wooden horses, riding around in a circle, leaving a dime, getting off the wooden horses, and going back to their real horses and riding off. So he, too, had that same origin point of, all right, that sounds great. And he started with just the merry-go-round and the Ferris wheel, but he also had a lot of sons and daughters. So he bought each of them a merry-go-round and a Ferris wheel. And so every time that uh, they needed to service one of those small communities, a different family member could go on a different route. So they could do four or five carnivals at a time. Or when they really, really needed to, they could bring all of the families together to take care of some of the bigger ones. So this is a couple of the um, getting ready for the season. Two trucks per carnival. So one, two, three, four, five, six trucks. You could do three carnivals with those two trucks because one would carry the carousel, one would carry the Ferris wheel, and everything that went with it. Um, because they had so much pull, Kinsley ended up being this carnival center of Kansas. And they even had uh, the Kansas State Fair contract for a long time. And this is, a, I'm going to try not to step on you. This is one of the things that I think is really cool. You can tell the size that they needed to do by counting the Ferris wheels. So here, they've got four family members together because they had four Ferris wheels there lined up. Um, so the bigger the carnival, the more Ferris wheels there would be, um, which is just super great. And they also had the contract for the Kansas State Fair, and they had that up through the 1970s. So this is an early Kansas State Fair midway. I know they've moved the sky ride over a little bit, but it still will always feature a Ferris wheel. There will always be those large, high things <laughs> that draw you into the crowd. Now this is another thing that I hate to admit as an adopted Kansan. I had not been to the Kansas State Fair until I went to the Wichita County Fair and rode their rides and started getting interested in this. And it's like, I can't legally talk about this 
until I go to the Kansas State Fair. So 2017 was also the first time I had ever been to the Kansas State Fair. And it was awesome. But that's another talk for another time. I do a talk about butter sculptures because they're great. <laughs> so back in Hensley, they have a Carnival Heritage Center. Um, one of the sweetest things that you'll find here is that they used to run a contest for children uh, saying if you could imagine any um, merry-go-round animal that you could want to see, um, draw it out and tell us its story. And every year they would choose a winner and they had carnival horse carvers that would carve out that child's the winning child's entry and they have a small carousel of about 10 of these fantasy creatures that were carved life-size that you could ride in their Carnival Heritage Center. Now we were talking earlier about the great thing about these small town museums is that you never know what you're going to find. This was a, an amazing find up in the upper story and they told the story of it like, oh yeah, we, you know, we just carve fantasy animals and put them together into a merry-go-round and then we write them. Um, but because it's volunteer run, it's very hard to get into. And with less and less volunteers, it means that this part of history is now becoming closed off from the general public, even though it is so beautiful and so amazing and so active. So I encourage you, if you're ever through Kinsley, ask and ask and ask and ask until somebody gives you a key to that Carnival Heritage Center, because it will remind them too that this is important. And they are the only ones who have that. But back to present day. I mean, I know 1970s now is what, 50 years ago? 1972 is 50 years ago. That's horrible. Ah, oh, I hate this. Ah, oh. anyway, 1980 was 30 years, 40 years ago. 1990 is 30 years ago. People born in the 1990s are 30 years old. That used to be old. Uh, that's, I'm digressing. Anyway, so back to modern day. Um, some of these early photos are just so great because this is really high plains. This is not a whole lot of trees, um, some beautiful landscapes, but it's a much slower landscape than here. You're driving a long time, which also means you get used to the skyscapes. You can see the storms roll in, but it also means that the impact of that, that Ferris wheel is just amazing. Um, but look at these early photos from the 1980s. These two, these I believe are Thomas County, um, are just your neighbors putting things together. So before they had buildings to house them in, people were taking them back to their barns and keeping them over winter until it was time for the carnival to come back together. Uh, this one I believe is Wichita County again, that might be my photo. Um, so eventually, people stopped starting storing them in barns and started bringing them together into buildings so they could be stored on site. Oh, I know yeah. But they all, um, each of the rides have an origin story and they also have like a family that adopts them. So, you know, somebody is really good at putting the scrambler together every year and knows every bit. And they'll bring their kids along so that it ends up being a scrambler family. Uh, and then, thinking about the rides themselves, they all came from somewhere. So I gave this talk in uh, Park City, which is close to Wichita. A lot of, there's a whole set that came from Joyland. Did anybody yeah. go to Joyland growing up? I never got to, but there are two different county carnivals that have three rides each from Joyland, and their merry-go-round went to Botanica. So oh. that's been fully restored, and you can ride the Joyland merry-go-round in Wichita still. But that's where Wichita County's Roundup came from. And I found this out by traveling with my partner who did go to Joyland and he was like, I know this is the Roundup that I threw up on. I absolutely know it. And I can show you which compartment it was. Um, the parachute drop went to another small county carnival. And uh, Joyland held on to them for a very long time because they, it was a family affair. They so wanted it to reopen, so it was closed for 
about 10 years and it, you don't call them abandoned because they didn't give up on it. They were waiting for the right time and sadly sometimes those times don't come. So the first batch of uh, carnival rides that they let go were in relatively good shape. The second batch had sat there for that additional 10 years and had fallen victim to um, vandalism and deterioration. So there was a, lo a lot of work for some of them. But here's that roundup in Wichita County in an uh, active Joyland shot. And probably Matt throwing up right there. Um, there's that uh, parachute ride again, active in Joyland. Uh, the little helicopters, those two ended up going out to county, and so did the swings. So all of these little pieces carry that Wichita history out. Uh, I've been following a lot of the amusement associations now for four or five years, and every once in a while there'll be a big announcement. We're sending a truck to Texas. We're sending, and they'll name a farmer who has a truck and what he's going to pick up. So this is a scrambler that just arrived for Thomas County. Uh, last year and is set up for this year and again these are volunteers this is the city saying all right you got another ride you got another ride well, yeah we're, we'll send the city truck down yeah we'll lift that in place these again are your neighbors putting the zipper cars into the zipper structure um, or this is one of my favorites uh, that is was the economic development director for Greeley County Christy uh, putting oh, up yeah. lights, yeah. I mean, cool. <laughs> yeah. This is this I'm is. Trying to hire her one. <laughs> she is amazing because she does stuff like this and doesn't think that it's special. But that's how communities work: is that everybody pitches in to string lights on. Why well, used to be a cattle thing? Yeah. Was the boy, was the Joyland in Topeka related to the Joyland in Wichita? I don't know. I kind of think they were. It was what? Boyle's Joyland Boyle. in California yeah. Street in Topeka, but it was the same Joyland, Joyland. But I didn't know oh, if it no, was the I same. Oh no, I think the Joy. I had it in my mind that they were connected. I never did know. I just said she was talking yeah, about. I never did know. I've been there. I did. Places actually. I had this been is to where Topeka one a lot yeah. when I was little, but not never Wichita. This is where I learned stuff. I only knew of the Wichita one. It was on California Street. Yeah. There was a joy Which you don't want to go there now, but no, it was good. Sure <laughs> it was good then. When did the one in Topeka close? 60s. Yeah. And that's uh, maybe a little later than that. It didn't really close for a decade or two. Till about that, 80 like or so. Yeah, it was kind of turned into a flea market trading thing. Yeah. And yeah. And yeah. How did I not know there was a joy lane in Topeka? See, this is why. <laughs> this is why you go do the lectures so you learn more stuff. Hmm. But they had rides. I mean, it was really cool when it was going. And and they huh. used to give out these whole bunch of tickets. And like at Oskaloosa, we live in Jefferson County. So I'd get a whole bunch of tickets and then I'd gather up all the kids of my daughter's class and anybody that went to school there and we'd get the moms and, you know, and we'd take all these kids. We had all these free tickets to do that and they had a ball. They had to pay for their own food, but other than that, yeah. That's, they, and that's what makes memories. Yeah, a whole lot of whole lot of tickets, and a lot of places says, "Oh, can here take some of these tickets because they thought they were too far from Topeka." But anyway, yeah, you just had the gumption to get yeah, it all together. Yeah, just get all the kids together yeah. and and get the moms and and we all had a good time. There, that's why these are such important parts because those memories that you just said are being created today for the next set of people who don't know that it's odd yet that they're part of a carnival family that they keep going. Uh, so volunteer work here you can see the cabochons on the underside of their merry-go-rounds. Um, in rebuilding all of these it uh, it does take a lot of money so in uh, this one is in Norton County at the Norton County Fairgrounds uh, each business has sponsored a pod so they end up being able to put their ads on the back of each of those pods so this again is a visual reminder of how many people it takes to come together um, and this is the, oh the other um, awesome thing about Western Kansas fairs is that the raffles are not going to look like anything in a large city. 
for anybody in Wichita, they'd be like, why would I buy a raffle ticket for that? But anybody in Western Kansas is like, raffle ticket for that? Yes, yes, give me 20, give me 30. Because this was donated by a local manufacturer and it's of the people for the people being put on by the people. And it's just a phenomenal thing. Tribune does a fundraiser every year that's um, battling pianos. So they have some professionally trained musicians that come back to Tribune every year for the big fundraiser for the carnival. And it's uh, 40 bucks a plate and you get to hear some of the best music taking that sort of hillbilly um, battle of the banjos into this elevated space in rural Kansas. So the, and it's like time warps too. So when you think about the Kansas State Fair, if you go down the midway, they're usually pretty current rides and pretty current themes. So what happens when the 80s die and are no longer cool? The ones built in the 1980s that really have that thriller feel to them suddenly aren't going to be worth it to the traveling carnivals, so they end up getting sold to some of these small towns. So this one is in Hoxie. They acquired that in 2010, just in time for the big 80s revival. So then suddenly, Hoxie is cooler than the Kansas State Fair could ever be because they have vintage 1980s rides um, with that complete in interior. And this one is one that kind of spins around in a circle and sucks you against the wall and then the floor drops out, which was my favorite at uh, the amusement park I grew up by was uh, Hillbilly Town in Lake of the Ozarks. And there's also a Madman's Mixer. And that's, that was the vomit comet for us. <laughs> now talking about industry of the area, helping to volunteer. Uh, early on, I showed you the Thomas County Fairgrounds and there was a big white Morton building in the middle. That had used to be their games and their storage. But then uh, somebody ended up purchasing a bunch of bumper cars. And I don't know if you remember how bumper cars felt and smelled, but for Lake of the Ozarks, there is usually a metal floor and there's this chicken wire ceiling and the flappity, flappity, flappity thing would make sparks that you were sure were gonna ignite your hair, but it had this ozone smell to it and that sound. So they had a menu, metal manufacturer in, um, or a parts manufacturer in Thomas County and that factory stepped up to make a full metal interior for these newly acquired bumper cars. So on the top picture, the small one on the right, those aren't pallets, that is plate steel on steel runners that they are then sliding together like a parquet floor. And then the welders came in and welded up the floor. This is not a small floor either. This is a giant Morton building that had been used for several years but was still in great shape. And this was all volunteer and donated material and time from their local manufacturer. And to go one step better than the chicken wire ceiling that I grew up with, they did a full metal ceiling too to really do the conductivity. So these are investments, not just structure, not just people-wise, but structurally in the operation of these carnivals. And of course, they get to be the first ones to test them. Uh, they're in mass, so this is 2019-2020. Uh, this is a brand, I mean 2022, or 2020-2021. Um, so this is brand new, and this is, gonna, this is the first year that they've gotten to fully open it up to everybody else who's been seeing these pictures online. And if you worked at the factory, you've gotten to run around in them a little bit. Uh, but this was the first full year for that interaction. And where was that located? Thomas County. Um, and again, these are only three days. Um, volunteers that order <coughs> toys, volunteers that turn into carnies, uh, volunteers that reupholster benches, uh, volunteers that uh, end up coming up with the list of things like inspections. Because this is a big shift. So. One of the uh, other communities had a question about liability for all of this because, I mean, this is, this is Uncle Joe who only has four fingers because he was not super smart when he was 18, <laughs> putting together a carnival ride that you're putting your little precious baby onto. How do you know that it's safe? Um, 
pre-certain events, um, it was trust. It was an awful lot of trust, and it still is a bunch of trust. But there's also things that we do in rural that are probably not OSHA uh, certified, like crawling under something suspended by a city truck without any sort of uh, equipment or spotters. Um, or this is sort of what the inspections had been, was your neighbor in overall going, yep, that looks good. Um, but they're putting their kids on it too. So that trust circle was very, very important. But I know all of you know what happens in 2016. This was a turning point for what it means to have a safe ride. So in 2016, um, at the Schlitterbahn Amusement Park, a young kid lost his life because there was no engineering inspection on that ride. Uh, There's no safety inspection before people going on that ride. So it was something that shut down the community carnivals immediately because there were no inspection stickers up to that point. Um, and they started passing some regulations that also made it very difficult for community-owned carnivals to operate and brought that insurance money level up to the point that was unattainable. But the community-owned carnivals, like any good rural person, is gonna say, hey, wait a minute, this is important. Why don't you help us make the laws? So the community-owned carnivals got together and started sending representatives to Topeka to help write le legislation that are specific to nonprofit community-owned carnivals that do not have a profit motive. So with this tragedy also came more responsibility, but it also means that coming up years and years, it, every ride now has a sticker. Every ride is now inspected. Yeah, Don. Uh, there's some irony with that last slide, uh, that youngster's fatality. That was our current Secretary of State's son. And uh, when he was in the state legislature, he led the uh, effort to get tort reform capped. And so there was some irony in that whole thing. Yeah. Yeah, it's theory changes when it's people. Yep. It changes a lot. And it's completely understandable why you would want very strict laws, just as it's as important for everybody that they affect to have a voice in them so that they end up being laws that actually reflect reality for a variety of people, not a blanket. So that's there. There. That's a. I don't wish anybody to learn that lesson. But, uh, but, it did lead to every single carnival out there having the same set of standards, but in an attainable level. So now every one of those carnival rides does not operate without a sticker. Um, they started having to post the regulations of what you can and can't wear. No open-toed shoes. No flip-flops. Some of that's like, well, duh, uh, but try to tell that to a teenager, and they're like, oh, it's just a flip-flop. Yeah, well, you can't ride. Uh, so it did give a little bit more bite to things that your mom was saying to you anyway. Um, so these are posted at all of them. Um, and in those signs that you find at some of these, one of the most important words here is volunteer. So these, the state inspectors are paid. The people doing the work for that the state inspector says are still volunteers held to a very high level. This is a sign from Norton County saying that it takes 150 people to run the carnival every night. Somebody from Hoxie just posted yesterday, thank you to all our volunteers, and she said it took 150 volunteers per shift, two shifts per night, to run the carnival. So for three nights, that is three, six, nine hundred people need to help run these things every year. Which is also, yeah, so that's what happened in Norton. Um, she just said it's, it's hard to find that many people in town. These can be double shifts. I mean, mm -hmm. you're not limited to one. But Norton County, when I was there in 2020, couldn't have the carnival that year because there weren't enough volunteers. But two Facebook posts later and some outrage, everybody who was outraged, the committee reached out and said, hey, I know you're mad about this, so which game are you going to run? 
<laughs> so they built their volunteer pool back up by saying, hey, if you want it, you have to build it, you have to do it, you can't just you can't just take it, this is how you build community. Um, one of the other things I love about documenting these is we reuse things, so horse barns become game booths run by uh, local organizations. This is also where you get some of the best food. Ottawa County's Carnival, you can't probably read it on the right, but community owned, completely volunteer, or all volunteer. Those are the important words. They run games, uh, the sign-up list can look so informal that, that it's just the high school students doing it, or it can be a department of uh, local government uh, force volunteering some of their uh, people to soak a cop at the Norton County Fair. Um, or the organization level that you see here in the Midway Work Schedule from 2018, which has every single time, every single ride, everything needed. And it really gives you a visual of what it means to be community. Once all of that's done, this is months of work. This isn't like two weeks ahead of time you start. This is take a month off after the last fair and then start planning the next one. Um, and once all of that do is done and the inspections happen, then the tickets are printed. They still do old school tickets. I found one that does wooden nickels for the Tri-County uh, Amusement Association. Um, Sheridan County, their tickets just went up. So they were 25 cents last year, but it took two to ride. This year, they, they snowballed to 50 cents, but it only takes one ticket. <laughs> so, <laughs> kind of evens out. And, yeah, <laughs> I mean, when's the last time that you even got to see a movie for a buck? Um, this is an aerial view from, I believe, Tribune, and while it might not look like many people, this is a town. This is a memory bank. This is those hot August nights where the sun finally goes down and it's still a hot breeze, but you all come together to ride these rides. And this is where the magic happens. In the evening, Cabochon shining brightly. I still haven't done anything with the lot that I have. Um, we did get to ride the uh, the thing, and uh, Matt didn't throw up, so that was great. Um, we were on the Ferris wheel when a typical Kansas thing thing happened. A storm rolled in. Yeah. You could see it coming, so uh, all the rides were shut down when we were on the top. They did let us down, but all of this work can be for only 10 minutes. Uh, some of you might not be able to open at all um, or you might be able to do all three nights again and again and again I mean, this kid's he's gonna barf um, <laughs> there's another Tribune one uh, a little bit pre-safety because he's pretty stuffed in there and I think his feet are probably not legal but again these are the family memories here you can see that great 1980s one in the background uh, happening in Sheridan County I think two weekends ago Another aerial shot, this one from, I believe, Thomas County. Fire department sponsoring uh, tilt a whirls in another great family photo. And just that sort of ethereal blur of memory that these will become for generations. And those Kansas skyscapes. I mean, riding a Ferris wheel in at the State Fair is pretty amazing because you can see everything. Riding it in western Kansas at twilight and watching clouds roll in is another kind of magic that you can't explain to anybody else. But I did want to end with these words from one of the managers of the Sheridan County Fair. All of this happens because of who we are in Sheridan County. We are a family of community-minded people who have respect and affection for one another. We work hard to keep this tradition alive, not only for each other, but for our extended families who come home during the fair, year to year, and strengthen their ties to their families and to this dynamic little town. Equally important is the knowledge of who we are not. We are not a struggling little town on the high plains with boarded up shop windows and tumbleweeds. We are not a passive population 
that hopes and waits for someone else to come here, bringing ideas and talents and motivation to help our town survive. We have the ideas. We have the talent. We have the motivation. Our country is, our county is viable and vibrant with many individuals who take responsibility for the carnival and other important traditions year after year. We are our county. And that is what I have. Does any of them talk about the cost of liability insurance? So, um, I mean, it's hard to get anybody in the world to talk about money. No. So, liability insurance, um, uh, one of the detriments, uh, there's a, a man who was involved in the Wichita County Fair at one of the things, and he thought that it had escalated to 20000 a night, which was unattainable. So it has gotten back down to a manage, he said a manageable sum. So I don't know if that means 5,000. I don't know if that means 10,000. But in that one specifically, they have sponsors for the liability insurance each night from some of their bigger donors. So that too is one of those early conversations of who is gonna cover this one thing that isn't shiny, isn't pretty, uh, but has to be in place before even inspections can happen. Just like your car insurance, you have to prove that you are insured. So that, would, but that was part of the legislation was moving those caps down, so that not-for-profit institutions that have no profit motive could still run. But if it'd be almost kind of cool where they got that many of them out there. I've seen them too as you drive through those communities in the office, but. It'd be kind of cool if they could do some type of a group thing to, for insurance. They might be able to by now. But that's also why they're separate from the fairgrounds. Right, sure. Uh, because, um, and why they're nonprofit. It was to take, not take advantage of, but to make sure that that applied only to the rides. Um, anything that happens with a ride goes back through a line of inspection and insurance for those rides, not for the fairgrounds. Because... That's a whole different beast of the, the ag economy and the community-based things that happen in a fair have their own sense of liability being around animals. And those laws shouldn't apply to something on a ride and vice versa, because there, there are different ways to die. <laughs> so all of this has ended up happening for a reason, but that could be a very logical next step. Um, nobody okay. has stated that as a barrier in the last two or three years. It's more been about the volunteers. But that doesn't mean it won't become a barrier as our populations continue to decline. I might have missed it. Did you have a time frame as to when the first carnival started and maybe maybe the first real ride that occurred in Kansas? Um, I know the 70s were very popular, but surely it started before that. Oh, yeah, so Parker carousels were 1910. 1910. So 1920s and 30s, is the uh, Broadbeck uh, family was, okay. was traveling in 30s, 40s, 50s, 60s, 70s. So there is a big set um, super early on with steam power, but then with electricity and generators, 70s and 80s would have been the heydays. And then 80s, 90s, regulations and costs of, of maintaining ended up being the, the downfalls of a lot of them. Um, I originally, I thought maybe you were also asking about time frame of these carnivals, which I didn't say. Um, this is after harvest celebrations. So they're usually timed right when harvest is over and getting in. So it is also the hottest part of the year, but July and August, you can almost make a circuit where you can hit one a night for those three nights, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and then the next weekend, do it again. And you could create a circuit to do all the ones if you're able to ride rides without the weather interfering. Um, Thomas, I think Sheridan County was shut down one night this year because of weather. Tribune was shut down one night because of weather. So a lot of that also is tied to the state fair, so the 4 H kids, so they qualify to go to state. Yeah. They got a time frame that it was pretty narrow. Yeah. And so all of this activity is right on top of 
ag people doing their jobs too. So you're doing your job and then doing your job again for the fun and benefit of community. So it's, it's really phenomenal. And when I did this in Park City, none of them had ever heard of it and they were almost mad that they didn't know. But this is also for the townspeople. These are your neighbors getting together and celebrating with your neighbors. So it's not that they don't want outsiders, but there's been no need to call for more people because that's not who it's designed for. Um, you're welcome to come. You're welcome to explore. You're welcome to discover a new town. But this is like the front porch of summer for rural Kansas. Thank you so much, Eric. You are welcome. Uh, let's give her another round of applause. Does anyone have any other questions for Erica? I had one. Uh, in your research, although you just did local towns or counties only, have you ever heard of TriStar Entertainment? The movie company? No, it, it was a carnival company. And mm -hmm. I know my son-in-law when he was in high school. He he worked. He ran rides. Was it? Rides, and he was in Topeka. Huh. But uh, Mr. Roberts owned it. Okay. Roberts, which is not in the families, but um, in Topeka. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Anyway. Yeah, I didn't really do research into yeah. the large ones. There's still a ride manufacturer in Wichita. Um, that actually produces the rides, uh, but there are so many carnivals that were traveling early. Yeah, well, this would have been a traveling one in Topeka, around yeah. Topeka area, TriStar. So I just I will add it to the list. Yeah. We were hoping to have uh, Vicki Flattery share with us to, this afternoon a little bit about the Ottaway um, Amusement Company and um, things came up that didn't allow Vicki to come tonight or this afternoon but I think Jackie Valentine had something you want to get up and share about her memories of the Ottaway. Well first Debbie I'm going to share with and I wasn't there my husband in high school and the boys went to Onega and he, he, he often told me how they rang the bell. You all remember that bell? When the big yeah, thing and the swing and the <laughs> ding. Well, there was four of them. Three of them, and Ralph was the last one. He was always sort of shy. They didn't ring the bell. Uh, he took the bell, that hammer, and he swung it so hard, it went up and ding, and it broke the handle. Oh. <laughs> so it, 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 it cut, it quit, it, the, that bell was History. shut down. <laughs> okay, now I am going to tell you, Linda first said, oh, that, that's not done. Uh, Linda reminded me, what about the orange carousel? Carousel horse. Yeah, my it carousel really horse. Okay, uh, my husband and I, we go to shows a lot. And here was this orange carousel at the show. It had many colors, but that the last color was orange, and its name was Mel, Mo. And it was the outside, I don't know how old Mo is, but he's sort of retirement upstairs. But he was the outside metal horse. Carousel horse. The carousel horse, yeah. It's just, you know, it was just, it didn't really have a lot. He, he just, <laughs> was like that. It wasn't these real fancy ones or anything, but and on the inside was the wooden horse, and this was in Arizona, and this Arizona, this this carnival, turned all Arizona. That's that's my history of that. I got that said on the for you, and now. I am going to tell you, I found, I don't know if it was a reprint or it was a real carnival horse with all the big uh, mane. mane and tail. Uh, 
I found one in Tulsa, and I got it too. <laughs> but I can't tell you the history of that. Now, this young man is taking care of Carney. Would you come up here, please? I was about this tall when I, my dad got Carney. Thank you. He says, thank you very much. He hasn't had that much loving for a long time. He <laughs> really enjoyed that. My sister and I, we would have to go. We know the carnival's coming. Ottawa's coming. Oh, boy, oh, boy. We would really, oh, and we'd go out. Dad would say, this is my second dad, because my first dad got killed no more. Pick up night crawlers. Every dozen, I'll give you some money. So we would be out there. Of course, sometimes he had water the lawn. He would pick out the, we would be picking out these carnivals. They ever died. Oh, we got this much. Oh, we got this much. Oh, boy. We were really excited when the carnival come to town. And my dad, oh, I'm, I'm sort of sentimental. They had a horse carnival uh, ride that you would sit on the seats and the horses would be going over and you'd bet on these horses and you'd lay your money down on the number that you wanted to do. And I'm standing by my dad. Can we come here? I'm standing with my dad. And my dad's there and he said, settle down, help settle down. Because he was watching the horses run and seeing who was, was getting on first a lot of times. And I'm standing there, oh, my dad, cat, cat, I want that one right up there on the end. This carny horse right there. I want that one. And he says, now settle down, settle down. Thank you for helping me. <laughs> yeah. Okay. yeah, you better settle yeah. down. <laughs> but anyway, he got on the seat, and of course you win the small prize first. And you sit there. And then you have to bet on another horse. I don't know how much whole carny costs, but I've had him for a long, long time. And I really appreciate the, the carnivals. It just, it just makes me, when I was th thought, said, well, I'm gonna tell you about this, and it just about made me cry. Because <laughs> it's so much fun. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you Jackie. Jackie. Thank you. Does anyone else have a story you'd like to share I just wanted to tell everybody that's kind of going back to the olden days. Centralia is having a circus on September the 6th on a Tuesday evening at 5 o'clock and 7.30. And so if anybody would want to take or go or take your grandkids or anything, they had one four years ago, I think it was. And it was very good and it was very like the olden days it was small and it was just really really good so i just wanted to let people know that that was coming up so if you wanted to travel to centralia to the circus how many of you remember when the circus came to onega at different times mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and you got to ride what the elephant was it the elephant we rode smellier than you would think yeah yeah <laughs> Well, I want to thank all of you for coming, and uh, just a little advertisement for our museum. We do have some history books here. Uh, I, I look out there, and I think everybody's bought all these books, though. So, yeah. but they're here. But I don't think Erica has one. Do you? I don't think so. So I would like to present you one of. Actually, I want to give you the history of Onega Ann. This is the one I want to give you. Oh, gives you, you some background on our history to add to your. Well, thank you. So I'd like for us to give her another round of applause for sharing with us today. Um, there's a brochure up here on historic Pottawatomie County. If you haven't looked at that, that gives two that we have tours. Uh, there's a membership form. If anybody here is not yet a member. Gina isn't. <laughs> I make her remember. And uh, Linda Rodenkamp and I worked with a with a church a church group, and we had a speaker recently on human trafficking, which is is, is a very very sad topic, but a very relevant topic. And oddly, one place where trafficking does occur is at 
at some of our carnivals and some of our county fairs. So yeah. there's some brochures up here on that if you'd like to pick up one and put it somewhere where you're at to spread the word that we all need to be aware of things that just don't seem right with, when, with kids on that. Um, we have some zucchini bread from Ruth Caston back there and some lemonade that we'll, we'll um, pour out if you want to just kind of visit for a little bit. We'll get the refreshments ready. And I want to thank you all for coming. And Erica, that was just really entertaining. Yeah. Well, really entertaining. Nice. Thanks. Very entertaining. Thanks for coming. Yeah. Especially on a nice day. Yeah.